Hey, it's Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another edition of Android Authority Speaks. Uh, it looks like you guys really liked our previous, our first edition talking about phone cases, but this time around, we do have a pretty hot topic on our hands, and we've had about a solid week to think about it since the announcement of the, yes, Nexus 6. So we're going to talk to the guys about it. I actually had everybody put together their thoughts, uh, and I'm going to be putting them together for you. We're going to start off with Kevin, who actually put up a long, lengthy video on his own channel, and you'll see the link right over over on the corner over here if you want to watch the full thing. But I'm gonna give you the highlights on it as per Kevin's suggestions. For me, the price is what made the Nexus the Nexus. You know, my argument was for half the price you're paying for your flagship phone or for half the price that this phone is worth, I'm getting a phone that's just as good. Also, that was a vehicle for a lot of people to get off their carriers. The vehicle for a lot of people to leave Verizon, leave AT&T, leave Sprint, because hey, you can buy a phone outright for 300 bucks, for 350 bucks, and you can then go month to month with a carrier and save a lot of money. That's no longer an argument anymore. I can't tell people to leave their carrier because they're not gonna have a phone anymore. So that's a real killing point. And the thing is you can't double the price of the phone the following year. Yeah, look, I, I know it's a huge spec boost. I know it's a better phone. It's faster, it's brighter, it has all the bells and whistles, yeah. And next year will be the same thing. So you can't double the price the following year. That is ASA 9, that's ASA 10, ASA 11. That is ridiculous. Look, I mean, looking at the specs, you can really see a difference that the Moto X obviously does not have the same specs, specs that this um, Nexus 6 has. Nexus 6 is ridiculous on the spec side of things, but I don't care about specs is what can you do with those specs? How does the experience change with these specs? Because if you look at any flagship phone right now, the S5, the M8, the Note 4, they all pretty much run the same. The OnePlus One, throw that in there too. They all pretty much run the same. The in-app experience is the same. Modern Combat, Asphalt, all those games are gonna run exactly the same. The only difference is the interface. The interface is gonna run different depending on what skin you have on top of it but the in-app experience is the exact same. They're pushing it towards carriers, so it sounds like they're really going, I hate to say it, but they're going the traditional, blah, they're going the traditional route. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, or rather the whale that is called Shamu, the Nexus 6. Is it really too big? Well, let me take you back to how people first responded to the Samsung Galaxy Note, the first original phablet. Walt Mossberg, who was then with the Wall Street Journal's All Things D, wrote that when you have it held up to your face, you quote, look like you're talking into a piece of toast. Or how Rohani Rabin said, the note may be too big for humans, but it's just right for elephants. And other people said, let's just call it what it is, a new widescreen TV. So people's memory seems to get a little bit short because when the Galaxy Note came out, it was a joke. But within 18 months, it became one of Samsung's most popular phones. And it was only 5.2 inches. And at the time, it was considered huge. And now a 5.2 inch display is considered normal. So I gotta say, I think saying that the Nexus 6 is too big is a bit premature. So I'm gonna talk about what I like about the Nexus 6 and what I don't like about it. So let's go ahead and start with what I do like about it. So one, Quad HD display. So since it's Quad HD, you know it's gonna be super sharp and look absolutely gorgeous. Two is the specs. Snapdragon 805, three gigabytes of RAM. So you know this thing is gonna be a beast when it comes to performance. Uh, three, the battery life. It's a 3200 milliamp hour battery, so we're expecting this thing to last a very long time on a single charge, and hopefully it does. Four is the build quality. Since it's based off of the Moto X 2014, it's gonna have really awesome build quality. And five is the most obvious one, is, and that is Android 5.0 right out of the box. Uh, now let's talk about what I don't like about this phone and there aren't as many, but you guys know it only takes one for there to be a deal breaker. Uh, so the first reason why I don't like the Nexus 6 is the size. Uh, I personally think it's too big. I was not wanting a phablet Nexus phone. I wanted a uh, no more than 5.5 inches at the most. So uh, the fact that it's six inches 
is kind of a deal breaker to me. And uh, even if it has really thin bezels, it's still gonna be a large phone regardless because uh, thin bezels can only help so much. And the larger the screen gets, uh, the less of an impact thin bezels have. It's kind of a diminishing return. Uh, but two, the second reason why I don't like it is the price. And this is probably something that a lot of people are gonna agree with. Now, I'm not as bothered by it as as, as much as other people are because uh, the price is definitely justifiable. Uh, it has great specs and there's basically no sacrifices being made on the Nexus 6 like there are, like there have been on previous Nexus devices like the Nexus 5 and the Nexus 4. Uh, there's no sacrifices being made here, so the price is totally justifiable. And $650 is not an outlandish price by any means. It's a pretty average price when it comes to high-end smartphones. A lot of phones cost $650, $700 without a contract. So this is a justifiable price, uh, but I do understand where a lot of people are coming from. It's a very jarring jump to go from $350 to 650 and potentially even 700 if you get the 64 gigabyte model. So I get where people are coming from, uh, but those are basically the two reasons why I don't like it. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the Nexus 6. Okay, so uh, my quick thoughts about the Nexus 6. Um, it's a huge phone, it has awesome specs, and it runs stock Android. Um, personally, I've been waiting for this Nexus device to come out for a couple of years now. Um, is six inches too big for me? Yes, uh, it is a little bit too big for me. Um, I use, I, I'm a huge fan of phablets too. It's not like I walk around with, you know, four and a half inch phones all the time. You know, I have the, uh, uh, you know, the Galaxy Note 3 right now, and I was thinking about upgrading to the Galaxy Note 4, but you know, at 5.5, 5.7, 5 you know, that's, that's kind of like the, the upper crust of, of what I'm willing to carry around in my pocket and in my hand all day. So, um, yeah, the Nexus 6 is just a little bit too big. In terms of price though, um, I think the price is actually fairly reasonable. I mean, you look at every other device that has similar specs uh, that's the similar size. You know, the Note 4 is like, what, 800 bucks? You know, you look at the other big, huge phones that are coming out, the LG G3 and, you know, all those other ones. And, you know, they're also super expensive devices. And they're all actually more expensive than the Nexus 6. I mean, you know, the Nexus 6 comes with a pretty hefty price tag, but the things that it competes with are more expensive. So really, you know, in my mind's eye, it's still the cheaper option. It's just more expensive than we're used to seeing out of Google. And I think that's why a lot of people have been giving it a lot of flack because, you know, they were getting ready to fork out 300, 400 bucks and Google's asking for 200 more, which is still a bargain compared to all the other stuff. But it's, you know, it seems like it's less of a bargain compared to the stuff that Google released last year. So those were all of our guys talking about the Nexus 6, maybe a couple of rants here and there. Uh, but all in all, they pretty much summed, summed up everything that I was thinking about the Nexus 6, but I do want to give you a couple of the highlights, especially off the top of my head, and also a kind of a thought that I had when it came to the industry as a whole when considering the Nexus 6. I do like that the Nexus 6 is in existence. It's great to see that the Nexus program is still going forward, but I feel like it may have lost a little bit of what it was originally made to do. It was supposed to be somewhat of a reference device, and reference is not a bad term by any means because it also allowed for a very easy entry point for a lot of users with a lower price point and basically a design that while attractive was also pretty minimalistic because it was more about the experience underneath. Uh, it's no longer just about the fact that you have an easy entry point into a stock Android experience. It's also about having literally the best of everything. And I know the Nexus 5 at the time was definitely one of the better phones that was available. It had top, uh, top of the line specs, but it still came in at a very reasonable price. Now, when you make a phone bigger, you have to make everything else bigger. We have all of the big specs, quad HD display, which is an argument in and of itself, and then finally a six inch um, size to the phone. Now, big phones are not really that big of a deal. They're something that have actually been around for quite a while, and we have a lot of good examples of them being executed beautifully, like the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and the Huawei Ascend Mate 7. Ultimately, the Nexus 6 kind of stands alone, and that's probably the only reason why I'm a little bit iffy on it. I wish there was a smaller version of it, maybe an update to the Nexus 5, like uh, like some of the other guys already said. Uh, but ultimately, I keep thinking to myself, if there wasn't a Samsung Galaxy Note line, we wouldn't have a Nexus 6. If there was no iPhone 6 Plus, maybe we wouldn't have a Nexus 6. If there weren't these large phones that everyone's really just sort of on this race to make the biggest phone that everyone can use, uh, then the Nexus 6 might be a different phone. Uh, honestly, I 
really was hoping that the Nexus 6 was like the Nexus 5 in terms of size and general feel and quality, uh, except it was just beefed up. Um, the Nexus 5 is still available and that's perfectly fine, um, but it's, it's kind of weird talking about the Nexus 6 and the Nexus 5 being brethren when the Nexus 6 is really a departure from what the Nexus program originally felt like with the 4 and 5. And that includes everything from the, from the size of the phone to the price. When I recommend to people what kind of phone to get given a certain price range, it's just a little bit disappointing that I can't recommend the latest Nexus uh, solely because uh, it's too big in a lot of different places and that might not be a very great entry point for a lot of people out there where the Nexus used to be that. So thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this edition of Android Authority Speaks. We're having a lot of fun putting these types of videos together and if you want to give us a suggestion of what kind of topic we could riff on, uh, you can let us know in the description below. But more importantly, let us know what you think about the Nexus 6 down in the comments below and tell us if you're going to get it, if you think it's too big, if you think the price is too much, if you think the specifications, especially the Quad HD display might be a little bit too much. Uh, really, it's a, it's, it's a phone that we know is trying to be the biggest and the baddest of all of them, but what whether or not that's a good or a bad thing is really up to you and we want to know what you think. So keep it tuned here, drop us some likes on our videos, look forward to our future coverage and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you can keep up with all of that. And once you're done with all of that, check out all of the content from my colleagues at Android that you saw in this video. And remember that AndroidAuthority.com is your source for all things Android.